Welcome to Service Georgina on Rogers TV. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk. Our goal is to bring you information to help you to understand more about the many services and departments of the town of Georgina. Today's show will focus on the Human Resources Department, and joining me is Bev Moffat, Director of Human Resources. Welcome, Bev. Great to have you here on the show. Thank you, Margaret. It's such a pleasure to be here. I think this is actually the first time that we've had uh, uh, you on the show and, and discuss human resources, so uh, it should be an interesting segment here. Thank you for, uh, for coming on. My now, pleasure. I think a lot of people, when they think of HR or human resources as being a department that just simply does the hiring, that you know they hire the people and, and that's their, their, their role. But your function certainly goes well beyond that. Maybe you can give us uh, an overview of the role of the, of the human resources department. I'm happy to do that. Human resources is a team of HR professionals. Human resources, HR, that's how we're often referred to. Um, and we're responsible for managing the entire life cycle for an employee. So we support the management team and our employees um, and the departments to achieve their goals. Some of the uh, core responsibilities of HR include recruitment and selection, performance management, training and development, our health, safety, and wellness for staff, compensation and benefits administration, employee and labor relations, right up to and including retirement or resignation. The HR team supports the whole organization and our HR team works closely with the departments to ensure consistent application of our policies and our collective agreements. We help them streamline processes to support the organization and keep up with the laws that affect the corporation and the employees to support the employees and managers with issues related to people. So you mentioned some of the, the policies. Um, maybe give us a little bit more details because there's there's so many policies. Some are, are mandated um, provincially that, that uh, any corporation uh, has to have any employer. And some are maybe more particular to uh, uh, an individual organization. So maybe give us a, an overview of some of the policies that, uh, that you do have to administer. So some of the external policies that are, are provincially regulated are things like the Employment Standards Act, the Labor Relations Act, the Occupational Health and Safety Act. So many of our internal policies are built to enhance that legislation, particularly for our organization. Some of those policies uh, for the town of Georgina include a respectful workplace policy, code of conduct, uh, progressive discipline, our salary administration, hours of work, overtime, standby and call-in, and our education, training, uh, seminars and conferences to ensure that our staff stay up to date with any changes. Good information. And you mentioned uh, labor relations. Now, we're a little bit unique in the town um, in, in, compared to some municipalities. We have unionized and non-unionized staff. Maybe tell us a bit about uh, the differences there and, and what we have for, for unions. So we do have both union and non-union staff. Our non-union staff comprise about 24% of our workforce and our unionized staff about 76%. So we have a total of uh, permanent full-time and permanent part-time employees of about 291. We also have a fairly substantial workforce of our casuals, seasonals, and sessional staff, which are considered non-union, but are in positions that don't necessarily uh, form part of that 291. But they're, in, they're positions that are really important to us and um, form a significant part of our workforce. Our local bargaining units, we have four of them. So we have um, the Georgina Professional Firefighters, the uh, uh, Georgina Roads and Environmental Services, the Georgina Municipal Unit, and Georgina Public Libraries. So we work with four different collective agreements. And they all could be very, very unique because you've you've described four very different uh, sets of, uh, of workplaces and, and uh, requirements uh, and employees. Maybe let's touch a little bit on the pandemic and the impact that the pandemic has brought to um, your department and to the corporation as a whole, because certainly 
if the pandemic has made us realize that certain departments are, are really key, um, it, it's shown that uh, human resources and the uh, pandemic and what you've had to, to work uh, through has, has certainly shown that you're a key department. So maybe tell us a little bit about some of the pandemic issues. The pandemic really changed a lot of things for us at the town. In March of 2020, we had to, like many other businesses and schools included, we really had to make difficult decisions to close our civic center to visitors. And this was mostly to ensure that the health and safety of our staff and our residents were our primary concern. The staff that could work from home were asked to work from home. And the health and safety of our staff, as I said, was our first priority. The major focus for human resources was the health and safety of our staff. And this response included the distribution of sanitization kits for our vehicles, purchase of personal protective equipment, including masks for our staff, the analysis of our workspaces, particularly in the civic center, because we, it is a tight space for many of us and also developing a work from home plan for our staff who were able to work from home. It's, it was a real change and I know very quickly uh, staff were able to, um, I'll use the word pivot and uh, start working from home. Some positions are, are better suited for that than, than others, but as you say, the, the health and safety of, of our staff and our residents has is, is always been uh, key. Now, when it comes to uh, the actual um, positions and applying for positions, how do external people or, or residents in general apply for jobs at the town? Because I do get asked, how do I get a job at the town? I really want to work for the town. I've got this skill set or that skill set. What, uh, what processes are involved for that? So any of our positions that come available uh, for external applications, because as I mentioned before, we are a unionized environment and one of our responsibilities and commitments to our unions is that our, our positions are posted internally first. But there's often a domino effect to that. So when a position does come available for externals, it is posted on our website at georgina.ca forward slash careers. And those applications, uh, uh, applications for jobs are only accepted through the website. We no longer um, uh, accept paper applications coming in. So those applications should include a cover letter and a resume that highlight your education and experience as they relate to the qualifications listed on the posting. Candidates that are selected for an interview will be contacted. If you are not selected for an interview, you will not be contacted. As much as we would like to be able to let every candidate know whether they're moving on or not, it's not always possible just because of the volume. So if I know I get people asking, well, I applied and I'm not sure if, if they got uh, the, uh, the application. Is there a way that, that, that uh, they are notified that at least the application has been uh, received? When they apply online, applicants will receive a confirmation of receipt of their application. If they apply more than once for the same job, because sometimes that happens because people are not sure if it's been received, they will only get one acknowledgement. Okay, good. So what are the different types of positions that, that we offer, I mean, that we commonly hire for? The town has such a variation of uh, of jobs and, and vacancies that come up. We have uh, facilities, roads, water and parks operators. We have building inspectors, professional planners, a multitude of administrative positions. Um, many of our aquatics and camp counselor positions are available. We have jobs in our libraries and many jobs in our recreation uh, division of community services. So we hire quite a, a wide range of, of uh, people from, from students, those sessional or casual, to, to through to, uh, you know, some of the jobs that require, um, you know, certain levels of education. So people should be, when they're applying, they should really look for the job that matches their, their skill sets. That would be... Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I really encourage 
encourage people to look at the job, look at the qualifications, to look at their resume and really make sure that, that their skill sets fit the job that they are applying for. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then when they're preparing, really try and match up their skill sets to what's being asked for in the job posting to help prepare themselves for an interview if it comes their way. Great. Are there some jobs that stay open, you know, all the time that we'd sort of have as, you know, availability? Is there some jobs that, that are there con- con- consistently? There are, um, Mayor Quirk, and those jobs will stay open and posted on our website all year long. Some of those include uh, some casual positions uh, and our seasonal and sessional recreation and aquatics positions. But most of the jobs will have a, uh, an end date, that uh, a closing date. And so I would I always say to people, keep an eye on, on the, the career section on, on our website, because once a job closes, it, it's closed for, for uh, submission, correct? That's correct. And interestingly enough, um, Mayor Pork, many of the people who are now permanent employees of the town started as summer students, seasonal, sessional, or casual employees. Exactly. So it is a wonderful way to get your foot in the door if it's a career that you're interested in. Exactly, and working your way up. Um, can you tell us a bit about the volunteer firefighter recruitment? Sure. At the town, um, the volunteer firefighter recruitment doesn't happen on a regular basis. It happens when there is a need. So we have a a certain number of volunteers that we're allowed to have. And those people will sometimes move on to other fire services, get promoted within our fire service. And when there are vacancies, uh, that the posting then goes up. So the last posting that we had was in 2020 for volunteer firefighters. And it, it, history shows us that it's approximately every two years that a volunteer posting goes up. But I would encourage anyone interested in volunteer firefighting to really watch the website and um, um, for, for that uh, opportunity when it comes up. Great. Good advice. Are there any interesting initiatives coming up uh, related to HR? So one of the really exciting initiatives for us is our new HRIS, um, which is our information system. And that is, um, uh, you know, that will help us streamline a number of our processes. The other exciting initiative is our summer student recruitment, which is underway now. Great. Thank you very much, Bev. Great information. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'll be joined by Rachel Dillabaugh, the town clerk, and we're going to learn more about all the different functions of the clerk's department. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this is Service Georgina on Rogers TV. Welcome back. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this is Service Georgina on Rogers TV Georgina. Joining me now is Rachel Dillabaugh, our town clerk. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you, Mayor Quirk. Now, as town clerk, you have a really quite a wide range of duties and responsibilities. Some people may be familiar with the clerk's department if they've watched or participated in a council meeting, but that's just one role of the clerk's department. Can you tell us some of the the other duties and responsibilities that that you and, and your department have? Absolutely. As you mentioned, we are heavily involved with council because we're responsible for procedural advice during a council meeting, as well as agendas and minutes. And we're also responsible for all of our committees in the same uh, in the same function. We're also responsible for uh, all the town's record keeping. So we're responsible for ensuring that the records are kept for the appropriate amount of time, that they're not destroyed, that they're treated properly. We're also responsible for licensing, issuing marriage licenses, for uh, doing commissioner of oaths services, pro- performing marriage ceremonies, administering Keswick Cemetery. So we have a really wide array of services that we offer. You are busy. That's certainly uh, a wide ranging uh, set of uh, duties and responsibilities. You mentioned licensing as part of the clerk's department. Now we don't license every business in the town. Some communities do license a lot more than than what we do. What areas uh, and responsibilities businesses do do we currently license? We do have a wide range of of businesses that we do license right now. So we license things such as salvage yards, short-term rentals, 
kennels, dog groomers, taxis, refreshment vehicles, horse riding establishments. There's really a, a wide a wide variety of, of things that we do license. So why do we license those and, and not other sectors of, of uh, business? So there would be a number of reasons that we don't license everything. Uh, for example, some sectors might be licensed by the province. Uh, there may be a public safety component that uh, has led to us uh, requiring a license for a certain business. There may also have been a need identified through complaints received or uh, a need identified through council. Yeah. And speaking of complaints received, um, the short term rental was quite a contentious issue and, and still can be in, in uh, many communities and in many areas here in, in, uh, in Georgina. We did put a process through for, through uh, council and through a, a very public process to to license the, the short term uh, rentals. How does that process work? I know you administer it and then bylaws uh, works to, to enforce it, but what's the process for somebody uh, licensing, wanting to become a, a licensed short-term rental? As you mentioned, we, we did go through a very lengthy process to develop our licensing uh, processes for short-term rentals. And what happens is if, if someone's interested in uh, applying for a short-term rental, they would uh, send their application to the clerk's division and that would trigger the reviews, the review process from us. We forward the uh, application on to other divisions for them to do inspections. So we would have inspections, for example, from fire, uh, municipal law enforcement, building division. And once those inspections were complete and we had all of the required information submitted to our office, then we could issue the license. There is a, a appeal process as well if, if they don't get a, a license issued um, and there's a committee that, that deals with that. Your, your department handles that as well? We do handle that committee as well. So there is a variance process in place for very specific things under the bylaw. So, uh, for example, off-site host is the most common one that we do see. And if someone is interested in, in having a short-term rental but want to be an off-site host, they would need to apply for the variance, and then that would go to the committee, and the, uh, the committee would make a determination uh, on that matter. So how many short-term rentals do we have licensed in the town that we've issued right now, licenses for? Right. Right now we have 24 licensed short-term rentals and that number could fluctuate because maybe somebody decides to stop doing it. We get new applications coming in, but at, as of today, we have 24. And I know I, I get uh, questions from residents. They're concerned that a property beside them is operating as a, as a short-term uh, rental. What should somebody do if they feel that a property is operating as a short-term rental and they're not sure if they have a license? So I would suggest uh, if someone's concerned about a short-term rental, if they're not sure if it should be operating, it's always a good idea to give our municipal law enforcement division a call and uh, they can investigate because they'll be aware of who has a license and who doesn't. And they would investigate if it was warranted and then perhaps demerit points may be issued uh, if need be. That's if they've got a license, but if they're not licensed at all, then there's a, a process that people can, can make that complaint. And, and then, as you say, bylaws can determine, do they have a license? Do they not? And, exactly. and go through that uh, inspection process. And, and we, as you said, we did have quite an extensive uh, public involvement and demerit points. So it's, it's a big issue. And, I'm, and I know that uh, we're working through perhaps some adaptations as, uh, as we move through the, the licensing process. Now, one of the other functions of uh, the clerk's department is administering the municipal election process. And council has no role in, in, in that. That is the clerk's department that uh, administers that. Maybe tell, uh, tell us just what is the clerk's department planning for, uh, for the next election? So it's definitely a very exciting year for the clerk's division because we, like you said, we do administer the entire election. So it is a, a huge undertaking for us. And we actually began planning for the 2022 election last year. Uh, it takes a very long time to get everything in place. And uh, we obviously need to make sure that it's, it's run uh, in an appropriate manner. And we do also have the added uh, the, the added uh, COVID implications that we do need to, to look into as well. So we need to take into consideration how COVID may affect the election because 
Of course, last year when we were starting to plan, we weren't sure if we would still be dealing with COVID. It, 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 you just don't know. So mm -hmm. we have to plan the election, uh, taking into consideration things like social distancing and, and uh, COVID precautions that uh, may be in place. This year, we have uh, decided to go ahead with internet voting as well as tabulator voting. It's a, a very exciting initiative for the election this year. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, there's lots of uptake from uh, from everyone on internet voting. I think it's personally, I think it's a really great uh, advancement for the town. So the internet voting will be available for the advanced voting period, as well as in-person tabulator voting, if that is what you would feel more comfortable with, you still will have that option. So there will be uh, lots and lots of information coming out about the election uh, in the coming months. We'll have... Uh, Lots of information coming about uh, out about internet voting and how how it works, how to go about it. So hopefully everybody stays tuned and everybody stays involved and engaged in the in the uh, election process. So certainly this is is not your first uh, election within the within the town. You've uh, been involved with with a few of them, but as you say, that COVID has really impacted all of our our functions and and certainly as you say. Uh, uh, with the uh, upcoming election, it's it's something that that you know is part and parcel with with your discussion. So, look forward to hearing more about uh, the um, the plans coming forward from the clerk's department on uh, the election. Now, you had uh, mentioned uh, earlier when we were talking about um, licensing that we issue marriage licenses as another uh, part of the clerk's department. We're still doing that, but there are some changes with that when it comes to uh, the COVID-19. Uh, so maybe tell us how, if somebody is looking to get married, how they would go about applying for a marriage license through the town now. Sure. So we, we did have to change our processes, obviously. we've uh, If there's anything constant about the last two years, it's really <laughs> just been changed. So we, we've had to change a lot of our, our daily processes, and certainly marriage licenses was one of them. We, we will now we now have a process in place for uh, for people to get their marriage licenses and we, we do as much as possible ahead of time. So by the time you're coming in in person to the Civic Center, you make an appointment with us. It's just to do the signature portion of the marriage license. We've done everything else ahead of time with you. So it. Uh, it really does streamline processes, I think, for the public because uh, they're not waiting for us while they're standing there. Previously, people would just pop in and, and we would do the license while they waited. So we get everything prepared ahead of time. We set an appointment with you and then you come into the Civic Center, sign with us, and then uh, you're all ready to go. And as you say, COVID uh, has you know, there's been many, many, many negative impacts, but one of the, the positive impacts is moving some services to, to online and, and streamlining. And, and certainly this, this is one of them. Now, when it comes to performing the marriages, are we performing marriages uh, as we did before? We are still performing marriages. Of course, it's not quite the same as it was before. Uh, there's been a lot of changes through, through this time about uh, the number of people who can be at a wedding, for example. But uh, we previously offered uh, marriages, we would do them in the Civic Center. Obviously, we can't do that right now, but we have performed uh, weddings outside. We've done a number of them. Uh, we've even uh, on Christmas Day, we performed a, a wedding outside. So it was really lovely. And uh, you, can, you can get a little bit creative. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, one of the officiants told us about a, a wedding that they did where they had a nice bonfire going. It was snowing and it just really beautiful. So yeah. you, can, you can get that creativity going as well. Yeah, people have had to adapt uh, many things and marriages and wedding receptions uh, certainly been one of them. What are some of the uh, items in the future plans for the, the clerk's department? I know we're undergoing a procedural bylaw review, but what are some of the other things that you're looking at uh, for this coming year? So obviously this year, our main priority is the election that uh, definitely will be keeping us very, very busy. We are also doing a review of the procedural bylaw, as you indicated. We did start that last year, and we will be bringing that to council uh, this year. Uh, it was, it's another very large project as well. And uh, we, we are also uh, currently working through an entire records management review for uh, the corporation. So we're taking a look at all of our records. We're getting new policies in place. 
And we've also uh, implemented some new software so that we're able to better track our records and they're all stored in, in the uh, same place. It's, it's meant to be a, a corporate repository for all of our records to make it easier for everyone, easier to store them, easier to find them, easier to dispose of them. So it's, uh, it's a really huge improvement for the town and also another really big project uh, as well. Oh, I know. And and certainly we've been paper-based for decades. And yes. this building that I'm in right now in the Civic Center, um, there's a lot of rooms that have a lot of storage covenants and, and documents that do need to be going through. So um, it, it is a big uh, a big project and certainly uh, your department, uh, very busy with uh, with that and uh, with the election and just uh, generally with uh, with all the impacts that that COVID has has brought uh, to us. So um, exactly. thank you, Rachel. I know you're you're one of the the long standing uh, members of of uh, staff. So thank you for for your work and your in your dedication to uh, to the clerk's department and the clerk's team. And and I look forward to uh, working with you on the procedural bylaw as we process that. So. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel, for, for joining me today. Great information, and I know you're going to have a very busy year. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and this has been Service Georgina on Rogers TV. Georgina, see you next time.